Hello, hello. And welcome once again to a Beatles program that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly podcast in which we discuss all things Beatles. It could be any part of their past, what's going on today, and even possibly the future. I'm Ken Michaels. I'm one of the four co-hosts of the show, also known from my website, KenMichaelsRadio.com. And my other uh, Beatles program, a syndicated show called Every Little Thing, being joined by my regulars, first of all, the writer for Beatles Examiner, that being Steve Marinucci. Hello, Steve. Hello, Ken. Hello, everyone. And also longtime writer for Beatle Fan Magazine, who's been with them since the very beginning, that being Al Sussman. Hi, Al. Hi, Ken. Hello there, everybody. Also joining us, who also writes for Beatle Fan, and he's also a freelance writer, has written for a lot of uh, music journals and uh, magazines, and he was known for many years writing for the New York Times in their classical department, that being Alan Cozen. Hi, Alan. Hey, Ken, and hello, everyone. On today's show, we're going to be talking about a forthcoming release that we just found out about in the last few weeks, and it's something called Pure McCartney, and this is something that is due out on June the 10th. It's being released in several formats. It's a collection of all solo Paul McCartney music, and it spans his entire solo career, starting with the McCartney album, taking you through uh, Hope for the Future, and even the 2015 remix of Say, Say, Say. It's being released on CD two different ways, as a double disc and also as a deluxe edition on four CDs. The four CDs total 67 tracks spanning Paul's solo career. It's also being released digitally and also on vinyl. And so I thought that uh, we'd all discuss this collection. We've all seen the track listing. I was wondering if you guys wanted me to read the track listing because I could do it all in a minute and a half. How about you read it and we say whether each one should be on it or not? (laughs) No. (laughs) Thumbs up or thumbs down. (laughs) No. There'll be plenty of time for that discussion. Okay. But I can do it real fast. Disc one, this is all on the CD. Maybe I'm amazed. Heart of the country. Jet. Warm and beautiful. Listen to what the man said. Dear boy. Silly love songs. The song we were singing. Uncle Albert Alma Halsey. Alan's favorite right there. Early Days, Big Barn Bed, Another Day, Flaming Pie, Jenny Wren, Too Many People, Let Me Roll It, and New. The second disc has Live and Let Die, English Tea, Mulligan Tire, Save Us, My Love, Bip Bop, Let Him In, 1985, Calico Skies, High High High, Waterfalls, Ben on the Run, Appreciate, Sing the Changes, Arrow Through Me, Every Night, Junior's Farm, Mrs. Vanderbilt. The third disc, Say, 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 the 2015 remix, My Valentine, Pipes of Peace, The World Tonight, Souvenir, Dance Tonight, Ebony and Ivory, Fine Line, Here Today, Press, Wanderlust, Wine Dark, Open Sea, Beautiful Night, Girlfriend, Queenie Eye, We All Stand Together. And the fourth disc, Coming Up, Too Much Rain, Good Times Come and Feel the Sun, Good Night Tonight, Baby's Request, With a Little Luck, Little Willow, Only Mama Knows, Don't Let It Bring You Down. The Backseat of My Car, No More Lonely Nights, Great Day, Venus and Mars Rock Show, Temporary Secretary, Hope for the Future, and Junk. Those are all the songs on the deluxe version of the CD. And I must tell you that when I first saw this this track list, I was just, I I was uh, really surprised. Because um, we, I I should say that we wanted to bring Darren DeVivo into the show because he's been a frequent guest on the program and back At the end of last year, we did a show where we were talking about our wish list for 2016. And Darren coincidentally mentioned a box set of McCartney music from his solo career. I think he wanted 10 CDs. Mm -hmm. But this is four CDs, and it's actually the biggest compilation that Paul has released to date. And it's also the first compilation he's released since Wingspan, which is a long time ago, folks. 1999, 17 years ago. And also, I should say that unlike Wingspan, which while it came out in 1999, only covered up through 1984. So you had all those years from 85 through 1999 that wasn't covered at all in Wingspan. So this is the first time that we've had uh, a compilation that covers the entire um, arc of Paul's solo career. So based upon this track listing, but before we even talk about the track listing... 
What do you all feel about a compilation of this magnitude coming out? We'll start with um, how about Steve? Well, first of all, you're you're wrong about Winspan. It was 2001. No, um, it was 1999. No, oh, wait wasn't. a minute. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. No, you're right. 2001. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And second of all, he didn't get every album because he missed Flowers in the Dirt. Right. No, which I'm, a lot of people say... have been compl- complaining about. Mm-hmm. Well, you said it spanned its entire career, and it and it doesn't. Um, he no, I'm saying out. from I'm saying from the beginning of his career till today. Okay, all right. Well, well not, I didn't I'm, say it was every single album. I, you know, I. To be honest, there are there have been people that have already made up since none of this stuff is new. Mm-hmm. There have been there are people that have already made up, you know, kind of dummy versions of this already. Without the new remixes, which you know we can do, we'll talk about in a little bit. You and mean remasters? Remasters? Remasters. I'm sorry, you're right. You know, I was listening to a little of this the uh, at first, and because I have I have one of these dummy collections, and and I was surprised how really um, uneventful this whole thing was. It was like, wow, really? You know, I mean, I suppose it's, it's well, the the define uneventful un, uninspiring um uh. un, it really you know it really didn't get it get me excited let's put it that way and um you know with the exception of the couple of you know non cd tra- full album tracks cuz there are a couple uh, hope hope for the future is one of them which absolutely which I, which I do have to say I like you know I'm not sure really what the point of this whole thing is I, I think, as I, as we were when we were talking about this last week, I said, this is a perfect streaming, you know, this is a perfect streaming radio station is what it is. I don't know that people that it's really going to be that it's going to be that much of a big deal. I mean, I maybe I'm wrong, and but a lot of people are just not are just not really excited about it, principally because there's a lot new on it. I mean, there's nothing new on it, which. It's really kind of irrelevant. It's the songs themselves, and and I don't see that the songs themselves are are that exciting. I don't know. Well, yeah. there's there in, from the press release. There's a, a couple of quotes from Paul that kind of put it in perspective. Uh, mm-hmm. He says, uh, "Me and my team came up with the idea of putting together a collection of my recordings with nothing else in mind." Other than having something fun to listen to, Paul says of this project. Maybe it's to be enjoyed on a long car journey or an evening at home or at a party with friends. So we got our heads together and came up with these diverse playlists from various periods of my long and winding career. So basically, yeah. So basically, which I have not done yet. I haven't taken it out on a long and winding trip. Right. So. uh, like he asked, although I might be doing that before the week is over. But yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, that's uh, it, it's the idea of, of a compilation is something you want to hear anytime, you know. And I don't know that I, I don't know that this is that exciting. I, I really don't. I mean, uh, there are some good songs. I'm not going to say there aren't some good songs on here. There are. The the real meat of a compilation like this is the discoveries that you make, and I don't know. Maybe it's too. Maybe I'm I'm really being premature about this, but I don't know that there are some of the songs uh, on here aren't really you know discoverable if you get my if you get what I'm saying there. Um, so I don't know. Well, there, there, well, you know, there may be there may be some things on there that people haven't heard in a long time, mm-hmm. so that maybe they, uh, maybe especially maybe a casual, a more casual fan may uh, discover the song we were singing, or um, uh, you know something something else that pr- appreciate, or something else that you know they are really not all that familiar with. Mm. Well, I'm, uh, there's al- there's always that possibility, but I'm just saying that, you know, uh, it, it as opposed to say the Beatles collection, which you know, which was exciting. This just doesn't I, do. Maybe if it had a DVD with it, I don't know. Maybe that would have helped. But all right, before I, I before I say my comments, how about you, Alan? 
Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, Steve sort of touched on my feelings about it. Uh, you know, I don't... I'm really never uh, that excited about a compilation of someone whose work I collect completely. I understand that, yeah, there are people there who don't buy them all and who may not have heard them and might be turned on to something, and, and that's fine for them. But for me, this is just a whole bunch of Paul McCartney songs that I already have um, mm -hmm. in orders that, you know, I can see how the discs are like four separate playlists and, you know, mm -hmm. jumping back and forth between periods. I can see what he did. But, I mean, like Steve said, I mean, I haven't found any of the four playlists really all that fascinating. I, I have the same mock-up that Steve has, so I've been listening to the sequence of songs as they appear on the album. And, uh, you know, it's pleasant, it's nice, it's okay, but doesn't do much for me. That said, I mean, I'm going to buy the thing because I buy everything. And, um, <laughs> you know, and so the best I can hope for... Um, is something that we don't quite know yet. One is that some of the tracks are remastered, and so they may sound a bit better than the ones on the shelf. Um, but until those full albums are remastered, even that's not going to do it for me, really, because mm. you know I want to hear the whole album remastered. I don't want to like have to go to a compilation for one track. I won't remember what's on the compilation anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing is, of course, you know, the booklet, the artwork, all that stuff. That might be interesting. It might have some interesting mm. info in it. It might have, you know, some recording dates. I doubt it. But um doesn't seem to be the kind of thing he does that much, especially with compilations. But, you know, I mean, there might be interesting stuff in the booklet, and I'm sort of hoping that that might be sort of something worth spending a little bit of time with because I, I i don't probably even plan to listen to it i'll get it i'll put it on the shelf and if i want to hear these songs i'll hear them in the context of their albums or on my sort of full itunes playlist that has all of his stuff chronologically and that <laughs> right. that sort of um gets on to another thing that steve said um which mm. is that you know we're living in the age of spotify why would anybody need to to buy these albums mm -hmm. when you could just assemble this yourself. I mean, even though, you know, possibly some of these things aren't yet on Spotify, they will be on Spotify. So I'm really not sure what the point of it is. But <laughs> and, even, and even if you don't have Spotify, mm. if you have all of you know, if you have all the CDs, right. you can basically just simply, as I'm sure a lot of people have already done, just simply make your own playlist on iTunes right. of uh, you know from your iTunes library of all of these songs, and presto, you've got. You know, you don't have – okay, you don't have the book and you don't have the physical product, mm -hmm. but you still have all the songs. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so I don't see this as being that exciting. You know, I'd rather – I'd rather um, he worked on some new material or really got more, you know, focused on those archival releases. Mm. You mm. know, this well, just doesn't uh, – mm. go ahead. I have a completely different point of view from the three of you. <laughs> no, and I don't. I don't surprise. necessarily. No I don't necessarily disagree. I'm not sure about whether or not something like this is valid in the digital age, like you were pointing out. But mm -hmm. I do happen to think that compilations are extremely important to have periodically, because the trouble is with the, what the three of you were saying is that you're thinking from the perspective of a hardcore fan who has everything already. And certainly, would I prefer to have something that has unreleased McCartney on it or something brand new from McCartney? Obviously. But there are more casual fans out there than there are hardcore fans. Mm -hmm. And it's extremely important, and this is the first time he's really done this, with the exception of maybe Wingspan, is that he's really mixed the hits with a lot of album cuts. And even though you might think something like, well, everybody knows Let Me Roll It, or everybody knows Too Many People, well, there's a lot of people out there that don't know those songs, believe it or not. And they might only know a handful of solo McCartney songs. So I'm thinking about the casual fan or maybe a brand new Beatle fan or a brand new solo McCartney fan who might go to a McCartney show and not know everything that he's playing. If you were to talk to one of those people 
let's just say you had a 15 year old son who's just getting into Paul right now. And you had to say to him, you know, I have no idea where to start. He's made over 30 albums. What do I do? Would you suggest one specific album? Would you suggest a greatest hits album? Well, to me, the way that I look at it, and this is also because I've spent all these years in radio. Since 1982, I've been doing radio programs where I mix all their music together, group and solo. I play the hits, I play album cuts, I play B-sides, I play rarities. I mix it all together, but I do it in such a way where I play a hit that everyone knows, or I assume everyone knows, and then I play something that's less familiar. And then people get roped in, and they start hearing songs that they don't know, and hopefully some of them appreciate it. And I know from having done my radio show all these many years, I get people all the time asking me, where was that McCartney song from? In fact, I had one not long ago, after I played Too Much Rain, that called me up on the phone and said, where can I find that? But you place these songs in between all the hits and songs that people know, and that's your way of getting that music across. So it's important to have a greatest hits album periodically. I think, you know, you should know the hits. I don't know if you necessarily think the hits are always the best material, but it's important to be able to mix all this stuff together. And I think something like this, a four CD collection, is the perfect thing to start somebody off with. It really is a good cross-section, although it doesn't cover all the different genres of music that Paul's done. It doesn't have nearly enough of his experimental stuff, as far as I'm concerned. Doesn't have any, and there, does it? No. Um, no. Well, maybe sing, if you call sing, sing, sing the changes. The change the changes. Thing. That's about right. probably about as close as you're going to get. Yeah. And one of the few uh, complaints I would make about it is that there needs to be a lot more rockers on there. There's a lot of great ballads. Yeah. But at the same time, I am thrilled to pieces to see a collection that has songs like Warm and Beautiful on it or uh, Beautiful Night. Don't Let It Bring You Down is one of my favorite McCartney songs. The fact that he even selected this, you know? I mean, I don't know how much thought Paul really puts into this. Maybe it's just as he says, he's coming up with a playlist for uh, an enjoyable ride. But I know that a compilation is extremely important to introduce to casual fans more of the, the artist catalog. So instead of just thinking about what the hardcore fan would want, think about what the casual fan would want. In fact, you can have the same discussion whenever we talk about what Paul does live in concert. I sure want him to go deep. I want him to go much deeper into his solo catalog, but he caters more to a casual mainstream crowd because he mm -hmm. wants to attract as many people as possible. Well, sure. here he is mixing the hits with a lot of album cuts. In well, fact, I found it really interesting. I just want to say he put a lot of songs in here that are album cuts that he's done live, you know, like Calico Skies, for example, or right. a Fine Line or a Jenny Wren. Jenny Wren is a masterpiece to me. I'm so happy Jenny Wren is in there. You know, I, I'm glad to see these album cuts that Paul is actually recognizing and saying, you know, this is really good. Let's put this on a compilation. I think Jenny Wren was a single, the, wasn't it? It was no. a single, but it didn't. Well, yeah, yeah it was not a really single. a single single. It was, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it got a lot of attention radio at the time. I, I mean, I kind of think, I mean, do you think that, you know, the casual fan who, you know, someone wants to turn on to Paul McCartney with a collection like this is being done a service by getting an album with zero cuts from one of his actual best albums, Flowers in the Dirt, mm. you know, or, uh, you know, and there, you want more rockers. I mean, there's Spin It On and there's all kinds. There's so many that he sure. could have put on, um, you know, London Town's not here. I mean, you just, you just sort of look through his catalog at, at, you know, you think of, okay, what are McCartney songs that I like? And you look on the list and kind of missing in action. But, I mean, the Flowers thing is, is I, I, I just can't understand that at all. And it's been a couple of weeks I've been sort of pondering it. You know, he puts these... Baffling. Yeah, he put it's these baffling. things together for, you know, fun in four different playlists and somehow none of the tracks from Flowers in the Dirt occurred to him as things that would be fun to hear. It's like his <laughs> one of his most consistent albums. I, in fact, except for the wretched Oue Le Soleil, like anything from that album could have been on here. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially My Brave Face. Yeah, really. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, no that's, one's... The one, that's the one that everybody's mentioning. Why the hell isn't My Brave Face on there? Yeah. 
there is no way that you can come up with a perfect set list here. You know, oh, no. if you if you surveyed a thousand different McCartney fans around the world and you asked them to come up with four CDs worth of material, I'll bet you every single one of them's different. We oh, all have our favorites. Okay, of so course. raise your hands, everyone. What would you rather hear? My brave face? Or we all stand together. What, what do you What do you think represents McCartney better? Than- <laughs> well, I actually, I sure. like I like we all stand together. <laughs> right. uh, I love we all stand together. Yeah. Mm. I, I, well, I, 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 but in terms of in terms of uh, the question, what represents McCartney better? There's no. Well, there's yes. no Yeah. Question. There, yeah, my uh, yeah. my brave face certainly. Yeah, represents. and see, that's that's really the question of this whole compilation do these songs really represent mccartney that well and that's uh, you know i don't i don't know i don't think i don't think they do i mean there's granted there's a lot of hits there but i mean i don't think the whole the collection as a whole really represents him the best Actually, but i'll bet you i'll bet you steve if you came up with your list and you read it on the air you'd have a lot of people saying you're crazy about that song and that song why didn't you put this this one in there? No, no, I, I, I agree. No, I'm not going to argue the fact that that everybody is going to have a different opinion about what McCartney songs should be there. But I'm just saying, the idea of a collection like that is what represents the artist. And I think there's enough argument to say maybe this maybe this doesn't. I mean, maybe it. it I mean, there are a lot of recognizable songs here. There's no question about that. But I don't think it's it's the be all end all of the of you know of the is it the best collection he could have made? There's there's the big question. You know, Alan, you I mean, Al, you were going to say something. Yeah, just going back to what uh, uh, to what Ken was saying. Looking, I'm looking over the 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 track listing for not the four CD set, but the two CD set. Mm-hmm. And and actually, for a casual fan who wants you know kind of a cross section of his post Beatles work, actually this does do a pretty good job. It's you know it's by it's by no means definitive, but you do have maybe I'm amazed, and you have Jet, mm-hmm. and you have listen to what the man said, and that's, you have silly love songs, and you have a, you know you have. Just, because most you of know. the discussion, most of the most of the criticism has been, you know, has, has been concentrated on the four CD set. On the four CD, yeah, yeah, exactly, rather, because that's the, really more of a hardcore mm-hmm. fans package. Right. right. No, no, and I, I'm, you know, I, I agree. That's that's an excellent point. Uh, um, yeah, because the two CD set Alan, you, really it, kind of does get the job done. How do you feel about the two CD as opposed to the four? Um, you know, Al's probably right, but they're s- still missing stuff from Flowers in the Dirt, so... Yes! <laughs> I mean, yeah, the fact that My Brave Face isn't on either right. one of them... Yeah, yeah that should be on... It's a big, big hole, and I I can't imagine what, what he was thinking there. I mean, that's yeah. just mind-blowing. And you know, when, you he, know? when he originally announced this, um, it came at the same time as those new mixes of 1985 sort of, mm-hmm. you know, were mm-hmm. being touted. And, and that, I guess, is going to be a record store day release. But it seemed, because of the proximity of the two events, originally I thought, well, you know, if the, those, those mixes to me sounded really interesting. I think, you know, one of them more than the other, but, but still the fact that they went back and did a completely different remix, uh, even more different than say, say, say is from the original. I kind of thought, okay, well, you know, maybe this pure McCartney CD is going to be kind of a hits package, but remixed, you know, mm-hmm. radically remixed. And I thought, yeah, it could be really interesting. And so, you know, that makes it even more like of a letdown in a way that no, it's it's just a bunch it's just a bunch of tracks, you know. Mm-hmm. So. I th- I think the, the 1985 is just the the vinyl thing, and I believe those are all gone. I think there's they I don't think they're part of. No, I think they're, I think they're turning up again on Record Store Day. Oh, are they? Yeah. Now, and I wouldn't be surprised if he put it on CD at some point too. Sure. You know? Yeah. Who knows? We 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 may all get them in our mailboxes the way they the way they do those things but you know yeah i mean it's just it's 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 just strange yeah the two cd set with all the extra stuff left off is is a better you know is a more concise collection definitely you know right i don't know why you think that why do you think that because there are more hits 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do, more, but do more. you think that the hits represent his best work? Uh, there's, I mean, a, a lot of those songs, I mean, I wouldn't call Mrs. Vanderbilt a hit, but it's a great song. It wasn't. Song. No, right. that's an album cut. It's right. a great song. It's a great song. Um, Wanderlust is another great song, you know. That's on the third disc. Right. Well, it's also on the two, uh, it's also on the two CD set, too. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, uh, Waterfalls is on there. No, Wanderlust is there. I took this off McCartney's own website. Wanderlust is on disc three. Yeah, it's not on the... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no. I'm sorry. Wonderlust is is on the two CD set. Yes, it is. It's on the second disc. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. This is off McCartney's own website, so... Yeah, it, I'm, I'm looking at it from the press release. But mm. it's, you know, it is it is a good, you know, for the... Yeah, as you were saying, Ken, from the, for the casual listener, the casual fan, it is a good mixture of hits of you know more well-known hits and some of his better album tracks so in that way it's probably it's it's probably a better package than the than the four cd the 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 problem that i have with the four cd package is that as both alan and steve said in this in this day and age of playlists it's like what's the point you know the because the casual listener the casual fan is not going to buy a 4 cd package you know they're going to they they would go if they're going to go for any of these it'll be the it'll be the 2 cd package mm-hmm. you know it's like the the i don't know who they're who they're aiming the the 4 cd package at because the hardcore fan as as we've been saying is you know simply all they have to do is simply you know plug in their you know CDs and into their iTunes uh library and make up their own their own version of it the only thing they'll be missing is the book mhm and well there and, there are a lot of hits on the third and fourth disc that you won't get on the first two so it's certainly not a complete greatest hits from the first two oh no but, no but I still think overall, this is more of a casual fan. It's aimed towards that. And, um, you know, I just anything that would increase interest in album cuts and the lesser known songs from Paul, I'm all for. It. And I think this this could be very successful at doing that. But like you said, in the digital age, it might not work. But I yeah. also think there are a lot of people out there who like being programmed, who are saying this is a package. Here it is. Let me check it out. The number of people who might go online and go to YouTube and check out every Paul McCartney song are probably very few. You can look up just about any song you want to from Paul's career and uh-huh. play it if you want to. But some people like to be told, hey, this is a list that Paul put together. So, And I also know, like I said before, many of these songs are songs that he's done live from his solo career that he hasn't even released as live recordings that uh-huh. people have seen him do. So if you went to see him in 2005 and you heard Jenny Wren or you heard a fine line or English tea, you know, and you didn't buy chaos and creation in the backyard, it's on here. But like I said, if you were someone who was just getting into Paul right now, how would you start anyone with such a huge, massive catalog? You need to have compilations like this to kind of guide them, you know, I don't know be... if I'd start. I don't know if I'd start them with a four CD set, though. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, better four CDs than over thirty CDs to go through. Mm. Still, that's a that's a lot. I mean, I think you know, um, uh, you, practicality speaking, practically speaking, I think people are are going to gravitate. People who don't know McCartney are going to gravitate towards the two CDs rather than the four. Okay, For and cost, even if they do, reasons. that's still a good thing. For cost reasons, rather than, but assuming they gravitate towards it, towards it at all, you're assuming that everybody's going to jump all over this, and I'm I'm not assuming that. Yeah. I'm not assuming that either, but I do know the value of compilations. Look at something like the Beatles one when it first came out, Alan's that favorite was, topic. But that was a different time. That's and and plus that's also. 27 number one hits right you don't have you know you don't have that you know there are there are major hits that paul has had that are not on 
uh, certainly not on the the two CD set. And right. that's also something you and I have discussed before, Ken, and disagree with sharply is that it's my feeling, and and I'm going to probably get shot for this one, that the, the group <laughs> stuff, the group stuff has has much more strength than the solo stuff. Well, that's a whole other show all that's, together. Yes, which yes. we we got it. We got to do someday because that's an argument that uh, Ken and I have had for decades. <laughs> but the, what? the point uh, the really? are there, are there trying... even really two sides to that argument? Yes, yeah. there oh, are. Sorry. Yes, yes, there, yes, right. there are. Yeah. <laughs> and I yep. know a lot of people who have followed my show that feel the same way I do. Yeah. But let me just say this thing about the Beatles one, whether it was a different time or not. The point is that a lot of young fans were introduced to the Beatles that way. Exactly. That was the starting point. And you need to have a starting point. You know, to me, the Beatles catalog, you know, for a short period of time, they recorded a lot of music. How do you again, you can apply this to the Beatles as a group. What album would you start them out with? You know, it's many, not an easy. Many, and how many not, discs, how many discs was the Beatles one? It was only one. One right. it wasn't wasn't four. Yeah. All so. that I'm saying here is that you need to have compilations like this, a greatest hits or a greatest hits that goes deeper into the catalog to help people along who are starting out. I know if I was just getting into the Beatles right now, I would be overwhelmed with all the music that's out there. If you were to add up everything the Beatles did as a group and as solo artists, there's over a hundred albums. Do you know how long it takes to absorb all that stuff and learn I it? Know. I you've know. But you've got to have a starting point. And when well, it comes to someone like Paul, who's made so many albums on his own, where do you start? Would you right, rather... Me, you answer that question for me, Steve. Well, Would no, you rather have someone start with Ben on the Run or the first McCartney album and, and work their way chronologically? Or would you rather have them listen to a greatest hits plus go a little bit deeper with the, with the album cuts? What's a better choice? You want my you want my opinion? I would rather go for a, a, a full album than go for a compilation because the the compilation takes things out of context, whereas the the album puts things into context. But, but which, let me, which, which I don't album, agree with that at all. Which album, I would probably I would probably say mm, Band on the Run probably probably. Yeah, but, but that only you know, no, I know. That I, I, covers no, I know. a you know mm-hmm. it doesn't it uh, covers. You know, it's a it was a very successful album, but it only covers you know one portion, one small portion of his no. and of I, his work. I agree, but what what Band on the Run does is it, it shows you Paul's uh, excellence as an uh, as an artist at that particular point in time, um, rather than bits and pieces taken out of context. Again, great greatest hits albums are are songs taken out of context. I mean, you get even on even on Beatles one, you get songs from within much better, be, much bigger and better Beatle albums, you know, and you don't get to hear the full context of those of those songs, and that's you know why I'm I, I, I mean I'm probably you know I can see probably a lot of people shaking their heads going what is he talking about but but really you know it's nice I think especially appreciating an artist like McCartney and getting a start on McCartney to appreciate an album rather than single songs. And that's mm. basically what you're doing with the compilation. Let me ask you, let me ask you, Ken, this question uh-huh. for somebody that in, in today's world with somebody that has the choices of streaming and pure McCartney, why would you direct them to pure McCartney? Because I think it's an excellent choice of songs. I think it could have been could have been better, but I think it's a good representation of Paul's solo career, with the exceptions of what I just said. I wish there were a few more rockers on there, and I wish there was more of his experimental side. But mm-hmm. I think that there's a lot of great there's there's a good balance between the hits and many of his great album cuts. And mm-hmm. we're not only talking about album cuts that at one time got airplay. We got, we're talking about album cuts that never got airplay. <laughs> I mean, when I saw Souvenir mm-hmm. on here, I flipped. I mean, I love the song Souvenir. And I, just the fact that he even chose that, I'm thrilled. You know, it's, it's a very strong r and b bass song right there. I love the fact, and this is just me, that this is something that Paul, and so he says his team, chose. But the mere fact that he thinks highly of these songs is a, is a little bit of an insight as to what he might think represents at least some of the best of his work. But I'm sure that he knows that he's got to throw the hits on there 
to please a lot of people. So we had to put them on there too. I mean, in many ways, like I said, so many of these songs he's done live. So it, it's got to tell you that in his mind, he thinks highly enough of these, these songs from his solo career. And he hasn't done nearly enough from his solo career live, as far as I'm concerned. But um, the fact that it's a good balance between the hits and album cuts, that's what makes me very excited about this. The fact that he even acknowledges Souvenir or Jenny Wren or <laughs> Warm and Beautiful or Beautiful Night or any of those mm-hmm. songs. And not just, and, and it's also, uh, I kind of disagree with a lot of people who think that Paul's best years were the 70s. And I love the whole Wings period. I think he was far more creative when we're talking about from Press to Play through Flaming Pie and also Chaos and Creation onward. So there's a lot of music from that time period, although it is a big flaw here, nothing from Flowers in the Dirt, grant you. But um, there's a lot of stuff. on The fact that he put Good Times Come and Feel the Sun. You know, he never even talks about Press to Play anymore. And he put two songs from that album in there. Maybe the fact that he, he that uh, like you say, he put all these obscure songs. Maybe it isn't for the new fan. Maybe it's for the you know for the older fan. No, but know. he's put enough well, hits in there to to make it more streamlined. Right, Al. The the four CD set is obviously directed toward the you know the hardcore mm-hmm. the hardcore fan. You know the I, the I don't two, I don't agree with that. Really, but the hardcore but. fan has all the stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that's the point. I think they, uh, I think at NPL Why, they sit know, around the... and they say, "How can we help Alan burn his way through his retirement fund?" <laughs> and, and they said, "Not not only will we put out a four CD set, we'll put out a two CD set and vinyl, because <laughs> and an SHM CD. Don't forget that, <laughs> right? Well, in Japan, right, right, and the downloads, <laughs> and the downloads." And that has happened throughout history with the Beatles and solo Beatles stuff. Mm-hmm. And like you said, how many copies have you bought of Sgt. Pepper? <laughs> so, you know, there you go. Right, I know. Look, look, it's my choice not to buy it, but that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but I think this is something to be very excited about. Because to me, if the whole, the whole goal and the work that I do on the Beatles is to educate people and get them interested in something more than just what everybody knows to hopefully go deeper into their catalog and to explore not just what they did as a band, but what they did as individuals. Anytime you've got any kind of presentation like that, whether it's a compilation like this, or if someday Paul ever does a concert where he's really going deep, then I'm, then I would be thrilled with something like that. Well, okay, Ken. So, but, um, Speaking as someone who has spent less than two hours of his life on Spotify, um, I kind of think that that's what the beauty of Spotify is. You know, you yeah. can look at these lists of songs, either or the, either playlists that other people put together, or I'm sure they would be happy to put up a playlist from Paul himself, or just look at the songs and say, I've heard that title, how does that go? You know, and... And you can experiment much more freely than when you're just given four four discs, and that's it. And then you have to. It's not like you have to decide then whether you want to go out and buy the album. I mean, you know, the individual albums that these are from. You you still can go to Spotify, but it, it just seems that this is kind of an archaic thing to do. Yeah. Well, that's why I wanted to bring this up as a topic: whether or not you think that it's valid in this day and age to put out any compilation from any veteran act that's put out a lot of music. Yeah, because the, the the you know the the previous compilations, you know, Wingspan, All the Best, Wings Greatest, all came out in an era before any of this. You know, this I mean, uh, when Wingspan came out, it was barely the Napster era. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so, uh, you know, so streaming and all of that and play iTunes playlists and all of that was all in the future, you know, so there was, you know, there was a definite point to to putting out those compilations, even though all of them were flawed in one way or another. But this one, again, it's 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 especially the four CD one. It's like. What's the point of putting it out at this point in time, at okay, this partic- well, at, at this particular moment in time when, you know, when you have streaming and you have 
playlists and things like that. It's it's like why, you know, either that either that or that book is going to have to be yeah really something special. That's right. That's right. It's mm-hmm. going to have to be an incredible book to make it worth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I wanted to bring this up as a topic. And I'm not going to I'm not going to argue your points because they're all valid points. But I do know that there still are people out there that like to be programmed too, instead of, you know, you hunting down the music yourself and 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 trying to learn all by yourself. And so sometimes when something's already prepackaged for you, a lot of people still will go for that, I think. <laughs> but Spotify does that, too. Yeah. And especially if if that album is available on uh, especially if the four CD version is available on Spotify or on, uh, you know, any of the uh, any of the streaming sites, it's like, again, why bother? Well, if it still introduces the music, whether you're streaming it or buying it, if fans are learning the music, then I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll obviously we'll see what happens when when it comes out. But I think if he had done something, you know, in a, I wouldn't I don't want to use the word innovative, but if there had been something really sharp about this, um, I think it would have it would have eased a lot of people's uh, problems. But um, no, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's, I don't you know, know. I don't know what you mean by do something sharp. You know, well, the, the thing something, is, something if there had been something, you know, like I said, a, a DVD would have been nice. I don't know, uh, maybe or perhaps p- perhaps a mixture of maybe live versions of some of these songs. Of course, we don't. That, we're assuming because there's you know there's absolute except for the 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 2015 remix of Say Say Say. There is nothing listed on any of the, you know, with any of these tracks to indicate whether it's the original, just the original studio recordings, if any of them are are live. For instance, coming up, no, no, we don't well, know whether we don't know whether that's the studio version or the, you know, the version that was a hit in, in the U.S. Um, you know, and, which was a, version, which was the live version. The version of "With Little Luck" is the single edit. I'm sorry to say. Ah. Okay. I, I hope that Venus and Mars Rock Show is not the single edit because that was abysmal. Yes. <laughs> that that was an abortion. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm still I'm excited anytime something like this does come out. I would obviously love to see something all comprehensive like Darren was suggesting and maybe a ten C D set. And uh I would prefer something like that myself, but I do still see the value in this. If in any way it wins over new fans or introduces them to music that they didn't know from Paul. So that's that's why I'm still I'm very excited about this. Okay. But I also yeah. I also will say, and you I'm sure you'd love a little criticism about this from me. One of the biggest criticisms I would make is that um, why on earth did he put Bip Bop in there? <laughs> you know, I mean, didn't Paul just say that Wildlife was the worst album he ever made? Now I don't necessarily have to agree with that. But, well, I um, think he, I no, think he I'm, went even further. I think he said "Bit Bop" is, is probably one of the worst songs he ever did, mm-hmm. and that well, may that, lead us to another clue because you know he's got "Bit Bop" on there, and he ends the album with junk. I mean, maybe it's just a big joke. Maybe it was like an April Fool's joke, and it's not even coming out. <laughs> But um, you know, the only other thing. (laughs) No, no, no. no. Yeah, really. (laughs) I am not speechless. I'm I'm thrilled that this is coming out. Like I said, there's a number of album cuts that I would definitely have put on there that got some airplay when it first came out, and I think that that those should be somewhat significant. Like during the height of Wings, something like "Beware My Love." You know, I would have loved to have seen on there. She's my baby. Mm -hmm. Uh, Back on my feet. Well, there's no Elvis Costello on here. Right. Um, Hope of Deliverance was never put on here. Um, uh-huh. You know, Ballroom Dancing is not on here. There's some singles, big hits, well, top ten hits, like Take It Away is not on here, and mm-hmm. Helen Wheels is not on here. Spies Like Us is not on here. The three top ten singles there in America that didn't make it. Mm-hmm. So, but there's never going to be a complete, you know, McCartney list of songs that you could fit into four CDs. If you really have studied his solo career, 
we'd all come up with something different that we think represent his very best. But certainly amongst these four CDs, they are amongst his best, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see. Like I said, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, it is. It see. is interesting we, that uh, that you know, <laughs> he does have a track from what he considers to be his worst album, and one of the one of what I guess what he would consider one of his worst songs, and yet nothing from what many people consider one of one of his certainly one of his better albums over the course of say the last uh 25 30 years mm-hmm. meaning flowers in the dirt mhm it's very eccentric no, I, really mhm there are there are some who are speculating that the reason why he didn't put anything from flowers in the dirt is because the remaster is coming out but i think that's kind of ridiculous if that was his reasoning behind it yeah, it doesn't Dev, make oh, sense. Dev. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't think that's true either. It it, it, w- it would be if if the information I publish today is accurate, and I have no reason to doubt that it isn't. About the uh, t- all the 2016 remasters that does bolster Ken's enthusiasm just a little bit more. <laughs> well, I'm going to get the remastered albums when they come out anyway, so. Mm-hmm. But um, no, I, I definitely think this is something, at least to me, I, I, I think of this as something to celebrate. Because if in any way it expands people's knowledge of Paul's solo career, I'm all for it. And also something like I was thinking about Arrow Through Me, which I think is a very overlooked song from Paul's career. I think it's a brilliant song. And um, I'm glad that it's on there. However, at the same time, I think that Back to the Egg is very misrepresented here. Because the only tracks you got are Arrow Through Me and Baby's Request. And when people talk about Back to the Egg, they talk about, oh, you know, Paul's rocking again. This Mm. is his edgy album. Well, those two songs don't represent that. And, um, you know, I could say the same thing about London Town. You don't have I've Had Enough on there. Right. You don't have Cafe on the Left Bank, which also got airplay on rock radio when it first came out. You know, but at the same time, I love the fact that Don't Let It Bring You Down is on there. Mm-hmm. I would certainly have picked something from uh, from Back to the Egg, like like Old Siam, sir, or Getting Closer. I mean, that was a single, but sure. uh, I'm surprised that wasn't on there, or Spin It On, uh, yeah, really. or the Rock Estra theme. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, this is not, like I said, it's not a perfect collection, but it is a very good collection. Mm-hmm. And then where, where Wildlife is concerned, and I know a lot of people, a lot of people who listen to my show love that early McCartney sound, and they love Some People Never Know. And they love tomorrow. At least tomorrow yeah, ah. made tomorrow made uh, wingspan. Wingspan, yeah. Hey Ken, how do you know that Baby's request isn't going to be from Kisses on the Bottom? Mm. I doubt it. Cause, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a good point. I'm thinking believe, it's probably the one from from Back to the Egg. Yeah, I believe that. I there was a um, a list that came out of what albums were represented. And I believe it was Back to the Egg. It wasn't uh, Kisses on the Bottom. Right. So. There were a couple of other things that uh, went on this week, guys. Um, did you guys see the uh, an- the new anthology podcasts? No, I heard about there, them. I didn't see them. Yeah, there's three new anthology podcasts on iTunes. Uh, um, they're they're not what I would call um, they're not as good as the unofficial ones. These are official. Um, they're not as good as the unofficial ones that came out uh, around Christmas time. Um, these have uh, Kevin Hallett and Mark, Mark Allen on them, and they're basically just talking about the albums. Uh, and they're they're rather short; they're like eleven minutes long. So, mm. but for anybody that I mean, they're free, and if you have iTunes, you can get them really easily. Just go into iTunes and 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 search for them, and search for Beatles Anthology, and they should come up, along with the other ones actually, because uh, those still will come up. But these are new. These are brand new. They just came out within the last uh, few days. So, mm. is there anything insightful in there? No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> it was really kind of disappointing because all they're doing is raving about the albums and saying how great they are. Mm. Um, which is a which that's quite a that's a task right there, you know. Because uh, I, I mean, they're they're basically promoting the the three albums is what they're doing, and and it's also timed in with the streaming. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. They're probably really just ads. 
Uh-huh. They just they just about are. They, I didn't want to say that, but yeah, they just about are. And then the other thing was the uh, picture that circulated with Ron Howard and Paul. Did you guys see that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And uh, I guess uh, it, it, Ron Howard said he was in Santa Monica. How about that? Yeah. So uh, does everything look like it's in play for the Beatles Live to come out this year, no matter what? Well, apparently what McCartney is do- what McCartney and Howard were doing was doing some stuff for it. So although there was no real I mean, he said he it, it was uh, Ron Howard said he was interviewing McCartney. So I assume that they're still working on it. Mm-hmm. So. It would be nice if it just came out in time for Christmas. You know, oh, I think I think mm. you can pretty well assume that's going to happen. I think that's that's a good assumption, I think. Mm-hmm. So, but in what form? <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be fun. That's gonna be right. Amazing. Is it gonna be, you know, is it gonna be as I mentioned in a previous show, perhaps debut on on Netflix rather than immediately debut either? Well, it's it's apparently it's not going to be in theaters at all. So. So one would wonder if it would be immediately released on DVD or if there's going to be sort of a pre-release either through Netflix or various uh, on-demand packages, things like that. I wouldn't, you know, that's a good, that's a good thought. And I wouldn't be surprised if Netflix gets it. Yeah. Because that would be, that would really be the way to go. I mean, Mm. you know, the, the Beatles can pretty much do whatever they want to as far as this thing goes. You know, because it'll be in demand, and I would actually hope it doesn't show up on on TV again, because that, you know, with uh, interrupted by all the commercials and everything. Although it was a big deal last time. That's, you know, what was a big deal the last well, time? Well, yeah. the, the broadcast, the anthology broadcast, and I remember. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember. Well, yeah. I remember when I was because I was working in when I was at the newspaper. One of the things I was dealing with was TV and the amount of you know, publicity and stuff that we got, you know, about that was just crazy. I mean, it was, it was wild. So, um, right. But I would guess it. Go ahead. One thing that I've noticed in recent years is that, you know, when the Beatles one plus was, was coming out, I was thinking, wow, they're really going to be promoting this all over the place. And I was kind of hoping I would see TV commercials, but the only thing I ever saw was online. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas yeah. if you go back to even like uh, the Beatles remasters in 2009 mm-hmm. and Rock Band, they were TV commercials galore. You know, mm-hmm. especially if you watch VH1 Classic or any of those channels, you did have it was advertised on television. Now everything seems to be online and people yeah. spread everything on Facebook. That's the way to go these days. Yeah. So but there, I, I don't think know there if was I'm still the feeling that... major for think... the for the Beatles Live project, other than. Yeah. Probably what the same kind of uh, treatment that the Beatles one got. But didn't one you plus. feel that with Beatles one they really kind of dropped the ball there? I mean that it's not just that you know we're used to seeing TV commercials; they just didn't really promote it very well. No, they didn't. You know, I just don't I, think they invested much in promotion at all. I, I, <laughs> no. I think they also just had bizarrely low expectations because I know record stores that felt like. They didn't get enough of them, you know. They had ordered a certain amount from uh, from EMI, and were told very shortly before the release that, well, you know, we we can't really fulfill that. We haven't got we haven't got enough of them, and and these were stores that, in a lot of cases, had pre-sold them, you know, sort of mm-hmm. the, so the stores had advertised to their customers, you know. If you pre-order, you know, you can have it the day of release and stuff, and suddenly EMI is saying, oh, uh, I mean, or Universal, uh, we, we yeah. just don't have it. What is that? Yeah. There's a right. huge difference now in the way that the Beatles are being promoted yeah. or not being promoted. Yeah. It's just a, a different way altogether. So, mm-hmm. and I find it a bit disturbing because, you know, back in the time when, when we had TV commercials for this stuff, you would also be getting a lot of casual fans out there or people who wouldn't even know that the Beatles One Plus is coming out or the remasters are coming out. Whereas the only people who are finding out about it are people who really do know about it or were looking forward to it anyway. Uh And they'll go to the Beatles' own website and see whatever commercial is on the website instead of broadcasting it on TV channels. 
So yeah. we're we going to see ads for Pure McCartney? Probably <laughs> not. Probably you know, not. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, you can probably, if there are ads, you'll probably find them on McCartney's website and people will share them on Facebook. Yeah. You they'll, know, use wonderful, they'll use wonderful Christmas time. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> another not even flaw. On here. <laughs> that's another flaw that's in this uh, collection. The wonderful Christmas time's not on there. <laughs> but, you know, the only thing... <laughs> Actually, I'm joking because it's How a seasonal Hiroshima song. Hiroshima sky so it, is always blue. So, <laughs> a seasonal an song really doesn't belong here. But the only other thing I wanted to say about Pure McCartney is mm-hmm. that I am glad that there are certain albums, the later albums, that are very well represented, like Flaming Pie and Chaos and Creation in the Backyard and New. And there are three or four songs from Ram. So the people who love Ram are saying, oh, cool, Dear Boy's on here, you know. Too many people's on here. So, um, in Heart of the Country. So, it's like, you know, he is acknowledging a lot of these albums. And especially the later stuff, which, uh, I'm, you know, I'm very happy about. Yeah, that, that is, it, it is good because he's done with the, 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 the glaring exception of uh, Driving Rain. Uh, he's done great work since, uh, say, from Flaming Pie onward virtually all of his sort of mainstream studio albums have been have been pretty outstanding and so it is it is good that uh, that some of that of that material may reach a uh, you know uh, a more mainstream audience mhm mm-hmm. yeah driving rain is is one of the most inconsistent of paul's albums but he still could have uh. put something like lonely road on there I mean that's that's really a good rocker that led off the album the same way that Stranglehold was a good al- a good cut to lead off press to play, which also didn't make this list. But those are my feelings on Driving Rain. Mm. <laughs> there should have been something to represent that album too. Well, at least Freedom isn't on there. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say thank oh, God. Yeah. You think Heather made him do that? <laughs> I don't think anyone makes Paul do anything. You know? Yeah, but we have to give the guy an out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we don't. Okay, it's just a, another one of those. Freedom. <laughs> it's really if I had a hammer. I like it better as if I had a hammer. Uh, I never connected those two. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I have never done that. No, that's never going to go away now. Thanks, Alan. <laughs> Anytime. Uh. If I had a hammer That's... and and freedom, yeah. Listen to them both. Where, You'll hear where it. are the similarities there? Mm, in the refrain. Okay. The same way I still don't I don't hear Stewball in Happy Christmas. Well, well, what can I tell you? <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's that's, hard not to hear that. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that's, I don't know. that's true. That's it, true, there's but... a similarity, but as someone who grew up on Peter, Paul, and Mary my whole life, and that's one of my favorite songs from from them, when I heard Happy Christmas for the first time, and even in the ensuing years, I never connected those two songs together. So, hmm. Oh, well. Anyway. So, it's time to wrap things up. Anybody have something they would like to uh, add here? No, I, 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 other than the Ron Howard thing and the uh, and the other two things and the other things I mentioned, no, I'm pretty well. Uh, I've done all I all the damage I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> but if any of you would like to get in touch with us, there's a number of ways you can do so. We have our email address, which is things we said today radio show at gmail dot com. We also have our own Facebook page, things we said today. We have our own Twitter account, which is what Steve. <laughs> uh, things we said, Fab, with the little and sign in front of it, or at okay. whatever it is, the, the little Twitter at sign. Thank you. And to get in touch with any of us individually, we can do so. Let's start with Steve. Beatles Examiner at gmail dot com. Um, I'm also on Facebook uh, in a number of places, including my own page and the Beatles News and Commentary page. And by the way, we'd love to hear what you think about Pure McCartney. So. Mm. Get in, get in on this discussion. Uh, we, uh, either post on online or uh, send us an email. We'd love to hear it. Okay, Al, how about you? Uh, you can uh, uh, get in touch with me on Facebook uh, at Al Sussman, uh, on Twitter 
at ASUSS49 or uh, through Beetle Fan Magazine, www.beetlefan.com, uh, www.paradingpress.com for uh, Changing Times, 101 Days That Shape the Generation. And I'll plug the fact that as as this is as this show is debuting, uh, I'm at the uh, the Fest for Beetle fan the the New York area Fest for Beatles fans this weekend at the uh, uh, the Hilton Westchester in Rye, uh, New York. Have fun, and I'll be uh, there thanks. too. Yes, mm-hmm. and in fact, on Sunday, uh, we're going to have, uh, if you're hearing this on Saturday or perhaps early on Sunday, uh, come on out because uh, in on Sunday afternoon uh, in the uh, author's room, what they call the Act Naturally stage or something like that, um, we're going to have a, uh, a Things We Said Today panel since Alan and uh, Steve can't be there, our uh, our occasional uh, contributors Tom Frangione and Darren DeVivo will be joining Ken and me. Mm-hmm. And we might very well be talking about Pure McCartney there. Uh, I, think else. That's a, I think that's a very good chance. So you guys listening can chime in and let us know what you think of this collection yeah. mm-hmm. and whether you think it's worth your while. Yeah. Alan, people want to get in contact with you, they can do so. Oh, probably, probably the easiest thing is on Facebook, either at um, Alan Cozen or my alter ego, Alan Cozen Remixed. Okay, and as for me, Ken Michaels, you can check out my website, kenmichaelsradio.com, and you can also email me at everylittlething at att.net, and you can friend me on Facebook under my radio name, Ken Michaels. All right, this has been a fascinating discussion with very different opinions about Pure McCartney. Uh, Thanks so much for tuning in. And on behalf of Steve Marinucci, Alan Cozen, and Al Sussman, I'm Ken Michaels thanking all of you for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. (laughs) 